Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be checking out the Trek Marlin Plus. Now I touched on this previously when it was announced and released in Europe, but it has been officially released in North America now. There was rumors in comments section below that people were actually already getting this in North, in North America, but it's actually, it's orderable. It should be in stores today. So how does the Trek Marlin Plus compare to the Trek Marlin? Essentially, it be begins with the same value, versatility, and performance that the Marlins are known for, being that they are a good trail bike, but also nothing too overkill, made for commuting, doing everything, essentially your go-to mountain bike, and overall go-to bike, when you're unsure what you're going to do. Now though, it is going to have pedal assistance by Bosch, which we all know is definitely one of the best out there. This is a more simple package compared to the Powerfly, with a non-removable battery, which I see as a good thing. As you can see in the images, it's a very low profile look. It looks super clean. It can be removed, but it is by train technicians only. So this will probably be like the Townie series where the bottom bracket and crank all has to be removed, screws out, and then it slides out. So not impossible to get out, but this is gonna be more like a cell phone where you finish your ride at the end of the night, plug it in and it'll be ready to go in the next morning. It does come in all the standard Trek Marlin sizes, which is impressive. And only the extra small has a curved top tube. Even the small does not, which is pretty impressive. Still has that same lifetime frame warranty that the Marlins are known for. And that's really geometry. It is a Marlin. There's nothing really different in those ways. Power specs are pretty similar. We'll get to that in a minute. The Bosch system uses the Active Line Plus with only 50 newton meters of torque. Generally, I find that enough to give you a good amount of assistance, and honestly, a good amount of assistance in every aspect. When you go higher than that to the 80s and 90s, that some of these higher end what bikes do, it really just kind of is more for racing or overpowered use. It really gives a kick and pushes you away from being a bicycle where you still have to work to being more of a an electric bike or an electric motocross bike, which really the motor is doing more than you're even putting in. It is impressively still a 400 watt battery. So although it's a pretty low profile one, it's got a lot of battery power to it and a lot of battery range and a Purion 200 display and remote, so it's got a nice, simple color display, you know, nothing too fancy, and a remote which is over near your thumb, so it's super easy to kind of switch modes. It does have the Active Line Plus Auto Mode, which I like a lot. This is kind of the optimal version of Sport Mode, which used to kind of bounce back and forth. This is just recognizing how fast you're going and adjusting the assistance accordingly. So it's just a super natural feel across all levels of assistance. You don't need to go from eco when you're pedaling on a nice flat, easy go, and then all the way up to high. It just does it all for you and kind of detects that for you. Like I said, 400 watt battery comes with a two amp charger, so not the biggest. So it will take 2.8 hours to reach about 50% charge and full six hours to reach 100% charge. So it is a plug-in overnight thing if you've ran it down dead. It's not one of those fast charge systems. And it doesn't look like they offer a 4-amp in any of the models. Doesn't mean that the Bosch one, you couldn't buy an upgrade to the bigger one to cut it down a little bit. So we should get about two to four hours of on the trail range which is pretty good honestly obviously right away and what level assistance you're using will make a big difference but you can get the power more range extender for those who want to really make sure you've got a big range uh, it's not a huge battery add-on so you're still probably only going to go four to maybe five hours total but at least it'll give you that kind of peace of mind it's a 250 watt addition which is that extender and that's kind of nice although it does not work on the extra small it only works on size small and up behind the motor cover um, should you ever need to remove it it allows only certified technicians and retailers to access it but you can add lights which is kind of cool 
and then obviously you can access all your brakes and cables without having to drop the motor so that little panel right at the motor you can take it off to adjust cables or replace them which is nice without dropping the motor instead of sending it into a shop but you can also get them to install lights and having those connecting things to it it's not compatible though with the new connect module from Bosch which is a GPS tracker um, that's just came out it's it's cool but it's a, a pricey price tag you can put obviously air tags which is a pretty convenient way to have some sort of anti-theft solution hopefully it's trackable anyway compared to a full dedicated GPS system and you can upgrade the Bosch display if you want it to be a bigger one. It is a full compatible Bosch system. As we go back to the bike, we can go into some of the more bike specific features. We've kind of talked about the electric stuff. Seems pretty simple now. With the bike, you come with a 120 mil travel on small all the way through extra large. Only the extra small has a 100 mil fork and that's just obviously to keep it lower which is kind of cool and it, it is nice that they come with that 120 mil bit more weight to the bike you might be going a little faster so having that little bit more travel is just going to benefit you overall all right so the maximum tire size these all come with 29s on the medium and bigger and 27 and a half on the smaller with 2.6 inch wide tires as a maximum tire size they come stock with 2.4. If you want fenders to fit, you'll need to keep that. It is not designed to use the plus size or go to like a mixed wheel. Obviously, you can always put it, but the geometry is going to be all wacky, especially with a 120 mil fork. You do have hydraulic brakes on it, which is nice. I mean, everything else is essentially Trek Marlin. You're going to be really good at riding it. It does have a semi integrated like tapered head tube which is cool again it just puts that beefier fork on it compared to what the marlin is used to just because you might be going a little faster down the trail and it will need to be a little more durable unlike the trek marlin 4 um, none of the trek marlin pluses are compatible with a two by drivetrain obviously it makes sense because it's the electronic one but to some people they don't realize that those motors have very specific spindles and cranks and everything works direct with them. It is compatible. This is kind of cool. Seems a little overkill, but could be interesting because it is still an e-bike. It is compatible with the SRAM T-type transmission. So it uses the universal derailleur hanger from SRAM, and it's compatible with the hangerless T-type transmission. So you would be able to upgrade this to a pretty high-end part spec, and those ones have done really well on e-bikes because of the extremely fast shifting, really reliable shifting, and especially under high torque and high load, they know what they're doing. Like literally the shifter knows when it's under too much load and it just won't shift. And then being that it's clamped around each side, it's actually much tougher and much harder to break, which is very impressive. It comes with kickstand fender and rack mounts just like a regular fender so you can make it super commuter if you want you can take the tires and make them super road worthy or make them a little beefier and make it even more mountain bikey it's not intended to have a front light there's not an extra hole in the front but you could get a rechargeable light but the rear there is an opening in a hole and they use the Bosch system there which is kind of cool. Marlin 6 does not come with the tubeless ready rims, but the Marlin Plus 8 does come fully tubeless ready and set up. So that's pretty much it. As we know, the Trek Marlin Plus, I think will be a very popular selling bike, being that it's gonna honestly start at a lower price point than where all the other electric bikes are with very similar features that people are looking for. It's pretty impressive and I like it. I think a lot of people are gonna go for something like this. Right now, the Trek Marlin 6 is sitting around 3,600 Canadian and the Trek Marlin 8 is 46. So 
they don't come in super cheap by any means. It's not like that $2,000 townie, but you are getting a much better mountain bike with that tapered head tube and bigger fork than a comparable Marlin. All good shifting on both models. It's just one's fully trail ready and the other's kind of commuter ready at, you know, a pretty reasonable price. They could be cheaper. You know, in my mind, they could have priced these a little bit cheaper. I would have liked to see the Marlin 6 at $3,000 instead of 36 It's a good buy. comes with a lot of price spec. That Bosch name really drags up the price. It would have been interesting for them to make one with maybe high drive or TQ or something like that and see if they could have got the price down. With Bosch, though, you do get a lot of reliability and a lot of benefit of the doubt. Like, you know it's going to work. It's got a huge backing to it. It's worked for years. The battery is going to last. Everything's going to be good about it. So I can see they went the safe route, and overall, it it will work well, and you won't have anything wrong with it for years to come. The Trek Marlin 8, I do like as well, is full mountain bike mode with a dropper post added to it, which... Again, I think the Marlin 6 would have been really nice if they could have had that feature built in at this 3600 price. But it's not a huge price to add one to it overall. I think we'll see a decent amount of interest to it for the savings. Could have been a little more low profile, like I say. It's really replacing where the Powerfly is. I'm not sure what Trek's mind is with that. I see it overlapping a little bit but you know the power flies have slowly crept up in pl price a little bit and they're bigger heavier bikes uh, more fancy which a lot of features most people don't use so it's nice to just simplify it and bring it back to something which will be a little more commuter friendly and still mountain bike trail friendly all for a thousand dollars less in the marlin plus eight well marlin plus six series all right, so I just wanted to go over that little one. They are coming. Get your order in now. Check out the links below if you want to see them. Um, they're all orderable, and I think you'll enjoy them. I'd definitely lean to one of these. If you were looking at a Powerfly or this, I don't see why you'd buy a Powerfly hardtail. Obviously, full suspension one, that's a big story difference. But the hardtail one, I'd just go for the cheaper Marlin 8. Or, you know, it's a pretty similar price, but it's going to be a really nice bike for that price. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and we will talk to you later. Good luck.